Yeah, traffic, move out of the way. I was stuck in traffic, yes. Welcome back to the vlogs. <laughs> I'm not looking at you while I'm driving. I'm stopped. And then I'll stop looking at you when I have to drive. I thought today I would talk about something that I get asked about all the time, which is, dear God, how do you get kids, wait, you can't really see my finger, for kids, into the car seat when they don't want to be. My son has gone through, that's your grandpa, um, phases of just like, just refusing to get in the car seat. We would go grocery shopping. I remember I was in California um, for Christmas, Christmas before last, and my son would not get in the car seat of the car, and I was in my friend's car, and they were there with me, and we'd both gone to get groceries. And he just like would not get in the car. We both tried to like sit on him almost, you know, I mean not crush him or anything, but just like push him into the car seat. It just wouldn't work. And I learned that you have to have patience. You really do. Um, there's just... I learned that you just have to have patience. You really do. And that was very hard for me because I found one of my aggravation triggers. You want pancakes? You have to have patience, yeah. You're totally right. What I found, my love, is that I had to let go of my internal, I've gotta do this, I've gotta be done with this, I've gotta go into my next thing, I've gotta get this, this done. And I had to be patient. And I don't mean sitting, you know, for an hour and going forward and opening the I mean, just sometimes, you know, five minutes, I would just sit there. And I would sit next to him on the floor of the seat or, you know, on the seat, depending on the size of the car, like are we in a rental car, or Fritz car, or a car. Um, and I would just sit there and I would look at him and I would talk to him and be like, okay, you know, we've got to go. And I would explain it to him and I would try to be as patient and loving as I could. Now, there are times when you really do have to be strict. I had to be with him. He would want to just pretend to drive the car all the time. Um, but I found that when I was losing my temper and getting grumpy about it and getting frustrated and I could just feel, you know, when you feel that parent rage bubbling up and you're like, I just want to get this done. Why does that have to be so difficult? But just being kind and patient made a huge difference. Why are we stopping Well, we're stopping so we aren't stopping on the choo-choo track because there is one lane of traffic ahead, my beautiful YouTube family, and um, I don't know what's up. I purposely took this road knowing that another road in the area was going to be closed, but looks like this road is too. I wonder if I wrote down the wrong road that I thought was going to be closed. It could be. I made note of this because I saw it a week ago that this road was going to be closed near me. And I put it on my calendar. I said, don't go on these days. And I was like, okay, today's one of the days. But um, maybe I got that road name wrong. Uh, but just sitting and being patient and realizing in myself that it made me mad and respecting my feelings that that was really frustrating for me. Um, but then letting that go and realizing that we weren't going to get anywhere faster by me losing my temper, right? There was no physical way to force your child into the car seat. Um, yes, love? You do have patience. Give me a high five. You, wanna, you work at the office all day? Oh my, I didn't know that. What, what are you? You're so busy working at the office? Whoa, I didn't know that. Well, thank you for being busy and working and getting fun stuff done. I hope you play too. Well, I am busy working a lot, but I try to never be too busy to play with my monkey. That's you. Oh, I can always play with you. You know I always put down my work to come play with you. Sometimes it takes me four minutes to finish what I'm doing, but I would do. Uh, he's a busy boy. So patience is number one and that's internal, that's for us. To have patience with the situation, with ourselves, and with our children. And then there are the techniques of like how do you get a kid in the car seat, right? Um, so I have found bringing a can of sparkly water or a crunchly butter or water depending on the age of your child uh, are both really effective ways to get them something to hold to distract them so that you can sit them in the car seat, place them, buckle it, and it's not a fight, right? Because the goal is not like how do I cram my child into this car seat while he screams and kicks. It's how do I diffuse the situation and get it to work well. I 
I know you need it's nailed by that. So a crinkly bottle of water, a sparkly can of soda that makes a good sound, something that's intriguing. Um, when all else fails, I often will go for, I'm trying to figure out where the construction is going here. Uh, an iPad will work, a phone, something with entertainment, distraction, right? Because they aren't really upset about getting in the car seat, right? They're upset about filling up that power bucket of theirs and feeling like, okay, I'm just checking to see. I did, I got the street with the traffic wrong. Nope, so. Um, I know I can't turn around now, I have to wait again. Um, and it's about letting them feel like they get some say in it, some decisions. And they aren't just being forced to go to one thing or the other, which you'll, generally I will find with my son, and maybe you find this is true with your children, that they act out like this and don't want to get in the car seat frequently because the majority of things we're doing in the car seat are boring. We're going from one boring thing to another boring thing. Um, which then brings in, if your child's old enough to discuss, let's go to the playground. Let's do something fun. Let's make getting in the car, get in the car seat, something that isn't always boring. Now I know you can't do that every time, right? You've got to get errands done, but that helps. That helps to have a positive association, um, to have a fun mommy and me day or a family day out where we're doing something fun. Um, those are all small things that I have found that help diffuse the situation, that help refocus my energy and his, and that help get us in the car seat with a minimal amount of screeching and biting. Because my first approach when I was dealing with it was just like, I'm just gonna force him in there. I am so annoyed, just get in your car seat, why aren't you in there? And then I realized that he didn't understand that form of parenting. It didn't make me happy. It was just a negative cycle that was reinforcing itself by doing that. And so I really had to reapproach how was I parenting my son and how was I parenting myself, right? What was making me so grumpy? Um, and it's the same thing that was making him grumpy is we all want to fill up our power buckets, right? It's this amazing thing that so often when mommy and child are having those meltdowns together, right? You're triggered, your meltdown is coming from your child's meltdown is because we're both just, we just want to communicate. We want to be heard, we want to be listened to, and we want to have some power in the situation. And it's so difficult as a parent because it's so easy to go through so much and not, and feel like you have no power in the situation. Nothing is working, it's just tantrum after tantrum, fit after fit, and children feel the same way, and that's where the tantrums are coming from. And so when you can have a little bit of empathy with your child, you know, often turns into empathy with yourself as well. And I think that is invaluable because, you know, we're teaching our children by our lessons and by the way we interact with ourselves as well. And I think that that's pretty important. Hey Abraham, my love. What's your number one advice for other mommies? says, come on, stop that. So basically, just pay attention to me, stop talking. <laughs> oh my God, I had a moment where I totally forgot where we were going. I was like, which way should I turn? <laughs> oh, it's been a hot, toasty, warm day, which I can't complain about. It's been lovely. We went for a swim. We had a beautiful little nap. Um, have I gotten anywhere near the amount of work done today that I would like? No, not if I'm being honest. Um, but that has been this whole summer. This whole summer so far has been really focusing on my little monkey because he's really needed an intensity of focus and love that um, is just part of this growth work, you know, as he's heading out of his threes, right? And he'll be four in the fall. Um, it's really been an intense summer. It's like, we need play, we need activity, we need interaction. And he really needs to be seen and heard in a way that is new. You know, when you're a work from home mama without childcare, um, you just gotta get your work done when you can. And that goes in line with the car seat, is you just gotta get your errands done where you can. What can we do to make it enjoyable? Like, we're gonna go over, we're gonna have ice cream as part of this outing. Oh yay, because ice cream fills on top is with the yarmulke. I'm rubbing my tongue, but you can't see it. Ooh. Popsicle, soda pop, and ice cream. Wow, Abraham's got plans. Okay guys. We're gonna go over and help our friend empty out their fridge because they have to go to work for a long, long time. And you never turn down friends when they say, hey, I wanna empty out my fridge. Um, I'll come eat some ice cream, sure thing. Because <laughs> they know freezer food lasts longer, but sometimes you have to empty that ice cream. Alrighty, y'all. Thank you so much for sending in these questions, for being loving and kind in the comments. I really appreciate that. Feel free to check out all my links in the description box. Uh, I link to my Instagram and to my 
Amazon page for my books, fiction and non-fiction. Um, and feel free to check my other things. And until next time, I will see you all around. And you know, go easy on yourself. Go easy on your children. Um, there's a million different ways to parent. There's a million different ways to be a child. And it's all unique. So, you know, let me know if you would like more tips on the Carsey thing. We've really struggled with that, and I have found some solutions that work. These are the main ones that I've found. Yes. Grandma has never met Baby Cedar, it's true. Why? Well, Baby Cedar's mama, your auntie, doesn't like Grandma, because Grandma was mean to her when she was a little baby. And so she holds it against her. So the lesson is we have to be kind to people or they might not want to spend time with us. That's an important lesson to toddlers and the whole sharing and not hitting thing. So until next time, thank you all so much. And it's it's nice to have summer to refocus on beautiful things.